All right, we are joined now on Really Legal by acclaimed trial attorney Michael Carter, who's also a constitutional scholar. Now, the E. Jean Carroll case, former federal prosecutor Joyce Aileen warned that Trump now has one week to pay or else E. Jean Carroll can start collecting on this judgment. And as you know, last week, E. Jean Carroll actually said, you have one week, Donald. Now, Michael, what, where exactly are we at in this case? What's the difference between a bond and paying the full court amount here? What are the next steps in this case? Well, Trump has two choices under Rule uh, 62. And Rule 262 explicitly applies here. It's a stay of proceedings to enforce a judgment. He has two choices, put the money up or put up sufficient bond to get a bond, a bond is generally provided by an insurance carrier, an insurance provider. In this case, with the, with the amount that's at issue, it would likely be a few insurance companies coming together to provide that bond. However, the insurance companies would wanna make sure they don't end up getting stiffed. And this particular person, Donald Trump, has a history of doing just that with almost everyone he deals with. What is the amount in, on bond that he would have to pay, pay? Is that different than the full amount? You have to pay the full amount plus the interest. And different states have different interest amounts, and the federal court has a different interest amount. Uh, the principal, I, 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 I haven't seen a judge yet say you can post less than what you've been ordered to pay plus the interest. Trump, however, is now saying, trust me, just trust me. And I think one of the factors that's going to weigh heavily against him is this team of lawyers, and I loose, use that term loosely, they waited 25 days after judgment. And then they filed a document seeking some relief from posting the amount or obtaining a bond. And they didn't put up any security for that. They didn't show the court, we act in good faith, we have X number of dollars or what have you. They literally waited almost the entire time period and then posted a document or, or you know, requested from the court relief, basically as, as Eugene Carroll's attorney said, saying, trust me. And that's, that's got to fall up on deaf ears with any court. This is a person who incited an, an insurrection. This is a person that has actually Netflix movies made about his failure to pay people over decades. I mean, this is, if, if there's anyone walking the earth right now whose word isn't good, there are probably two people that we know we can never believe, Putin and Trump. Now, do you think that because of Trump's history of not paying his bills, that that's going to affect his ability to get a loan to put a bond by an insurance company? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't know where you're going with that, if it was a court or an insurance carrier. An insurance carrier, absolutely. They, they have duty to their shareholders, and, and, and that duty is to, to basically not engage in uh, loans or providing amounts for people who are likely never to repay. And Trump, his history tells us he's likely never to repay. And his current situation, as I think Eugene Carroll's attorneys really set out nicely in their document to the court, his current situation means there's a pretty good chance he'll no longer be a businessman in the future. If, if yeah. you call the kind of fraud he's done over the years business. Yeah. Now, Judge Kaplan, in this case, issued an order last week saying, quote, 25 days after the jury verdict in this case and only shortly before the ex expiration of Rule 62's automatic stay of enforcement of the judgment, Mr. Trump has moved for an administrative stay of enforcement pending the filing and disposition of any post-trial motions that he may file. He seeks that relief without posting any security. The court declines to grant any stay, much less an unsecured stay, without first having afforded plaintiff a meaningful opportunity to be heard. Plaintiff shall file any response to defendant's motion no later than 5 p.m. on February 29th, 2024. Any reply shall be filed no later than 5 p.m. on March 2nd, 2024. What exactly is Judge Kaplan saying to Donald Trump in that order? First, 
follow the rules. There's a federal rule directly on point, follow it. Second, if you're gonna make some Hail Mary pass for, rule, for, for relief that is outside the rules, for relief that is extraordinary, you probably should have posted some something to show us you're in good faith. And you should have an argument that's compelling. And again, I think that the argument put forth by Eugene Carroll's attorneys put this in, an, in a nutshell. And I, I don't think the court will be able to ignore that reality. Now, what happens next then? If, if Trump doesn't post bond or post the full amount in the coming weeks, as former federal prosecutor Joyce Aline was saying, the court can, quote, get to work on collecting these assets. How would the court go about getting to work on collecting those assets? Well, the court has the court has got to work uh, already by by entering an order and the order's running. And when the order runs, then you can take lawful means as a, a creditor. And as a creditor, you can do lawful things. You can't do illegal things. You can't run and seize a building, etc. cetera. Uh, but, but you can start trying to get assets. You can do uh, various motions within the court to have the debtor come forward and explain the financial situation, ask questions under oath. The problem is this isn't an ordinary case. This because this isn't an ordinary debtor in that case. This is someone whose company CFO not only pled guilty to fraud, but this week pled guilty to perjury about the fraud. So it makes them a little less than trustworthy. So is it possible that they force sell some of Trump's assets? I, argue, I, I, I exist in what I call the normal legal world. The Trump case sometimes seems like it's outside that world, as the Supreme Court proved uh, earlier this morning. So in the normal legal world, the answer is yes. Yes, a debtor can do that. There are various mechanisms, and I'm not an expert on those mechanisms. I, I'm pretty good at getting the judgments, but the enforcement of the mechanisms uh, there, there's various statutory mechanisms one can use. And yeah, it can amount simply to uh, getting property transferred over to you. Okay. Now, what do you think are the next steps in this case? What do you think your prediction, I know legal <laughs> or not, are, are what happens uh, with the Zijin Carroll judgment? Because he has one week. He has one week to put up or get these actions enforced. Yeah, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm hesitant to predict anything involving Trump, but under the rule of law, if he doesn't comply with Rule 62, the enforcement actions commence when that time runs. When that time runs, it's game over. What I can predict with reasonable certainty is Trump and his lawyers, and again, I use that term very loosely, uh, but the people that are representing him, I, I can guarantee or, or predict with some certainty that they will try another, maybe many Hail Mary moves, and I can see them running to another court and filing something, and uh, there's just no end to it. Well, when you have a client who's, at this point, able to pay the legal bills based upon mm -hmm. money he's taking from people donating money to him, uh, there, there's really no end to what some lawyers would do. And now is he able to use some of those supporter funds to pay off this judgment? Well, he has been, and, and there's no sign he's going to stop. Uh, I'm not an expert in when you get donations for a political cause, what can you do with them? But it certainly smells like something one shouldn't do. Uh, again, I'm not an expert in that, but if I, if I donated money to a political candidate, which I've done, I, I don't want that candidate using it for anything other than uh, making our, our democracy work better and providing enhancements, services, and benefits to the community. Right. So, all right, it sounds like Trump has one week to start or to put up or shut up, as they say, with this judgment. Michael Carter, trial lawyer in Chicago, who's uh, been both a prosecutor, defense attorney, and now plaintiff's trial lawyer who's won record judgments 
um, nationwide uh, record judgments. So Michael, thanks so much for coming on Really Legal. We appreciate having you on and can't wait to have you back. Thank you, Justin. Let me leave you with this one thought though. This may be the first time the law actually applies to Donald Trump the way it applies to the rest of us. Well, w wouldn't that be something? With Really American, I'm Justin Horwitz. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit notifications. We're going to keep you up to date on all of Trump's legal woes going forward. So thanks again.